In my view, I think we need to focus on the things that make us similar more than the things that make us different. So I am Elizabeth Zunan. I am a children's book illustrator and author. Um, I live in upstate New York in the United States. I was born here in the city of Albany, and this is where I live now. I grew up in the Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire, West Africa. I grew up speaking French, and I grew up um, reading books in English and in French. I grew up in a, in a bilingual household. One parent is American, and one parent is Ivorian. So we always had sort of one foot in, in two different cultures. Um, every summer when we lived in Cote d'Ivoire, we came back to Albany, New York to spend about six weeks with my American grandparents. So even though most of my um, early schooling was done um, in French, um, I came back every summer, kept up with my English, saw my American side of the family. And so now I have been here full time since I was um, just about 13 years old. So I was always interested in art. Um, I studied art in um, college. I wanted to do something related to children and education and reading. And I had a lot of really great children's books growing up. So I decided I wanted to be a children's book illustrator and author. And that is what I do today. We're here in my studio. Um, it's usually pretty messy. Um, and some of the pictures you see behind me on the wall are early images from the first book that I both wrote and illustrated. This is called Grandpa Cacao. A Tale of Chocolate from Farm to Family. It was published um, in May of last year from Bloomsbury Books. And yeah, that's me, author, illustrator, and I think in my core, I'm an artist. Your illustrations are absolutely stunning. And uh, one book that I've shared with a, a class I did a few years ago was your The Plastic Bag. Yes, One Plastic Bag. One Plastic Bag, and I absolutely loved that book. And it was, and it was we, we got so much from that text. It was incredible. Um, you know, there's so many different links we could make there. Um, mm -hmm. But it, yeah, your illustrations are absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm in awe of, of what you've achieved is incredible and um, so what i want to ask you you said you touched upon it there about the kind of text you were exposed to growing up and um, could you elaborate a little bit more on that with the kind of books you were reading growing up yeah um i had a lot of books when i was growing up in cote d'ivoire um that featured african stories african characters um, I have a couple here. Anansi the Spider, which is pretty well known, um, a Shanti story. And then one of my favorite books was Le Petit Garçon Bleu, or The Little Blue Boy. Um, and it's well, basically my French. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it's a book about racism. Um, and it teaches children about racism, but the, the little boy in the book. Um, happens to have blue skin instead of a dark brown or a medium brown or a light brown shade. So it's it's talking about the concept of racism just through a really kind of crazy occurrence of this child having blue skin. Um, and then one of my other favorite books is, oh, I realized this book, I, I have it in English here, but I think I also have it in French, called The Smile Stealer. And a lot of the books that I really enjoyed as a kid in Cote d'Ivoire um, were written by author Fatou Keita and illustrated by illustrator Claire Mobio. Um, I also had a lot of classics like Babar books. Um, I had a lot of American books as well. Um, let's see, Good Night Moon is a classic that I think everybody is familiar with. Um, and, oh, my favorite book, I think, when I was young, or the book that I point to today as kind of turning on this interest in stories with diverse characters is The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats, author and illustrator. And it's a book about a child who goes out into the snow to build snowmen, 
uh, throw snowballs, um, collect snowflakes, and the child in the book happens to be a child with dark brown skin. And his skin color has absolutely nothing to do with his enjoyment of the day, his enjoyment of playing outside in the snow. It's just an instance where we're placing a character who happens to be um, of a minority group is placed in a, a situation that a lot of kids of all colors and, and cultural groups can identify with. So I really gravitated toward books with characters that look like me. Um, wow. Yeah, I have some books with animals as well as, as main characters, but usually I gravitate towards books where either the character has similar um, features to myself or has similar interests to myself. This book, Cherries and Cherry Pits, written and illustrated by Vera B. Williams, is about um, a little girl who is an artist and she has all these beautiful markers and with her markers she goes around and she draws pictures of her friends, her family members, her neighborhood. So I really loved books where I had something in common with the character, whether they looked like me or not. But I think I usually gravitated towards books where um, the character on the cover had brown skin. And, and so that when well, that brings me nicely onto my next question, Elizabeth, in England and America, you know, there may be some differences, but ultimately we're all trying to bring about a common goal and a common change. What would you say is really, really important globally, what needs to happen within education in terms of trying to promote that equality? Um, that's a great question and I don't have a specific answer or all the answers, but in my view, I think we need to focus on the things that make us similar more than the things that make us different. Um, here in the United States, we have something called Black History Month. Yes. In the month. Yeah. Yes. So in the month of February every year, there's a focusing in the curriculum on well-known usually African-American uh, figures in history, um, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, um, and, and really people who have a really storied, uh, a really important story that has to do with um, freedom, um, American history. And I think it's really important that children of all races know what the famous and important figures are mm -hmm. of different races, but Sometimes I feel that, especially in terms of children's books, there is a focus to um, create books about someone who is from a minority group who overcame something really difficult. Um, for example, esca escaping, um, escaping from slavery. That's not something that the average elementary age child today can really understand. And I don't think most adults can really identify understand being enslaved and what it means to escape from that. And so I think it's important to show important people who did very impressive things, but I think it's really also important to show um, people of all races in the most mundane of activities, the most mundane of everyday um, events, like um, everybody eats food. Why don't we have, um, when I was in high school here in the, in the United States, we had a, a cultural, cultural celebration every year. And we performed dances from different cultures. Everybody um, who had an association with um, a different country made the food, their favorite food from their country and came and shared it with the class. I think it's really important that we can focus on the things that make us the same. We all love food, we all have a favorite recipe. Let's bring in, let's share our favorite recipe. Um, and it's not necessarily having to do with what makes us different or what makes this person stand out from the group. I think another thing that would be helpful is to have maybe um, one day a month in every classroom where there can be open dialogue, where students can ask each other questions. And um, I mean, it's it's not always we're not it's it's not it's not always the case where classrooms are diverse to begin with, um, but I think especially where in in places where classrooms are made up of students that don't look like each other, it's important that they are comfortable asking each other questions. The most um, important and 
personal questions and also, you know, just like, what's your favorite color? Why do you like that color? What's your favorite song? Why do you like that song? Or one thing I always um, am, am curious about is um, um, when young kids ask African-American kids or, or black kids, can I touch your hair? That's a, that, that can be a really sore subject for someone to be asked, yeah. can, I, can I put your hair, can I, can I put my hands on your body? Because this thing that's growing out of your head is, is so different than the thing that's growing out of my head. And I want to see what it feels like. And I understand the interest to see what somebody's yeah. hair might feel like. Um, but I think if we have open dialogue in classrooms where, where students can ask each other, no, you may not touch my hair, or yes, you can touch my hair, and what does that mean? How does that make me feel? How does that make you feel when you touch my hair? How do you think it makes me feel if I have to tell you, no, you cannot touch me? Little mm -hmm. things like that. I think we should focus on, you know, um, respecting each other's bodies, each other's, each other's personal spaces, and understanding um, why we do the things that we do, and like the things that we like, and talk the way, the way that we talk. You've given, you've given so many ideas there, I think, for teachers to, to, to think about. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I, you know, all those comments you mentioned there, I've heard before as a teacher myself. And, and you're absolutely right. I think, you know, moving those barriers and just getting to know each other is really, really important. And, you know, I love that approach. I love that, that mentality um, towards really promoting that equality. And I do, I love your illustrations, Elizabeth. They're absolutely amazing. Can I ask you what's your favorite book that you've done? Oh, it's, well, that's like choosing, I don't have children, but my books are the closest thing to my children. That's like choosing my favorite child. Um, but at this moment, I think my favorite book is probably the book that I am just about to begin my final illustrations on. Um, this book doesn't have a finalized title yet. We're calling it Salt for now. Mm -hmm. And it is about a journey of a camel caravan through the, the Sahara Desert. Um, and these camels are carrying big chunks of salt. So I'm really excited to make big, bright, Color with camels, with sunsets, with oases, with palm trees. Um, so yeah, that's what's really getting me excited right now. Is it's what's what's to come. That I haven't yet created, but it's it's formulating in my mind. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it enjoyable and useful. In the comment box below, please put a question or a comment about the video. To grow our community more and help other teachers out there, please subscribe to the channel and share our posts and videos. Thank you.